After hours of poring over System Shock, the remake of the 1994 classic, the overarching word that stuck in my mind was reverential. This 2023 iteration by Night Dive Studios strives to recreate Looking Glass's beloved immersive sin as faithfully as possible. In an era in which remakes of popular IP are thriving, this one stands out in how it faithfully recreates everything you remember of the original game, but in a way that is so faithful it arguably feels a little dated. For a game that seeks to introduce new audiences to the wonders of System Shock, it largely achieves this while equally stumbling giving you might really need some pre-existing love for this franchise before you go in. For those unfamiliar, the premise of System Shock has the player, a nameless hacker, trapped aboard the Citadel space station, a large research and mining station that spans across multiple floors that players must explore in order to progress and ultimately escape. You awake after receiving a series of cybernetic implants that allow you to interface with the environment through hacking and other augmented tools, but you've put yourself in a pickle. You made a deal with the devil for these upgrades, namely Edward Diego, a member of senior ranking personnel at the Trioptimum Corporation, and did him a solid by hacking and removing the constraints on the sentient hyper-optimized data access network or Shodan, an AI system that controls the space station's operations. Waking up six months after you completed the job, the space station is now in chaos, dead bodies everywhere, mutated abominations haunt the halls, cybernetically augmented humans hunt you down, and all the while Shodan watches your every move. The original System Shock wasn't the first of the genre, but it is in essence the game that defined the immersive sim. Locked doors require you to solve puzzles to unlock them, be it rerouting power systems, finding keycards carried by cyborgs, or passcodes found in audio diaries. Players can decide whether to fight against enemies, sneak around them where possible, or just outright hide. Upgrades that improve your abilities, healing units, recharge stations and more are found by exploring each floor of Citadel Station. Doors and terminals can be unlocked by finding the cyberspace points, jacking in and completing the shooting challenges within them, all played using the Six Degrees of Freedom style movement, later popularised by games like Descent and Forsaken. Extra resources are purchased from recycling rubbish found around the station and returning it for credits. Over time, the knowledge you gather of the world helps you develop a richer understanding of how to go about surviving the whole ordeal. The remake captures this core gameplay experience with much of the same dread and tone of the original, be it with the moody atmosphere, the haunting ambiance, the detective-like gameplay as you explore every nook and cranny, feeling like it has been ripped straight out of 1994. The level of dedication here in retreading familiar ground is palpable in that it seeks to be as faithful a reproduction as possible. For the most part, levels are built exactly like you remember. The door locks use the same key codes, the enemies are in the same spots as before. It's certainly been a hot minute since the last time I booted up the original game, but it was fairly nostalgic to open into the medical lab and have those odd moments remembering a particular corridor or a specific encounter and the graphics and overall art style really helped to reinforce this. Of course, the original game was, like all other shooters of the era, 2D sprites rendered in a 3D style. The remake, however, is a fully 3D game built in Unreal Engine, and the art team have created an art style that seeks to balance between reminding you of the 1994 aesthetic, all the while it exploits modern rendering techniques. The environment art is designed to be quite retro and has the same somewhat egregious art style as the original. It uses a really clever approach to texturing whereby from a distance everything looks relatively clean, whereas up close it appears much more pixelated, akin to what you would expect from a game of the 90s. I'm assuming there's a shader pass in here somewhere to make it as consistent as it is, given it's a rather interesting choice and one where I feel in still images or while wandering around it can actually look great, though I found that a lot of interactable switches and the like can sometimes get lost in the sea of pixelated computer dashboards and wall designs. Plus, strong use of primary colours in some instances made it kind of difficult for me, as a colourblind player, to find buttons I'm meant to be clicking on. All of this means that within a short period of time you're back in the world of System Shock, searching for the information you need to open that next locked area, trolling back through your audio logs you picked up hours ago referencing a puzzle you're only now coming up against, finding a way to get back to an area you've previously explored while refraining from spending too many resources often avoiding confrontation either by locking a door behind you or simply running away as fast as you can. It is all as faithful to the original as you could imagine for a game launched in 2023. But it's this reverence that is both System Shock's biggest strength and arguably its largest weakness. 
It's clearly a labour of love for the Night Dive team as they go about reproducing many aspects of the original that you remember fondly. They also equally reproduce many facets of it that are frankly quite dated, and it would pull me out of the experience all too frequently. The remake uses modern conventions when it suits it, be it the graphics, enabling controller support, a more feature-rich inventory system, plus features like full subtitles for dialogue, auto-reload of weapons, toggling press or hold for aim and crouch actions, all of this enabling improved accessibility. But in many instances the game does the opposite. It embraces aspects of the original design that are so obtuse or frustrating you wonder why they kept it in. Ultimately, every part of this remake that I felt dragged it down and prevents it from being a fantastic experience comes from a stubborn determination to reproduce how the game played 30 years ago, rather than critically reflecting on whether it needs reworked. All of this plays out at a time that I'm currently playing both the Dead Space and Resident Evil 4 remakes. Naturally, these are bigger budget affairs, and so comparing them based on dollar value is a little mean-spirited. But in both instances, they take the opportunity to re-evaluate how those games would work in modern times and make adjustments to suit. Or they enhance an aspect of play to make it feel more contemporary. By failing to do this in many respects, System Shock feels a lot less like a remake and more like an elaborate remaster. For me, one of the biggest issues is that the combat lacks any real substance, and that's a combination of both how the weaponry works and the enemy AI you face off against. Yes, the weapons have different ammunition in all modes, but most gunfights are fairly rudimentary. You walk backwards, shoot them, and you're good to go. All of this is reinforced by just how basic the AI is. Enemies walk straight towards you, don't factor where their other ones are, don't coordinate or organise how they fight. You can often use the environment to suit your needs, given you can easily kill enemies as they go round a corner, given they all beeline on the shortest path plus cyborgs and other enemies with ranged weapons will often kill other enemies that block their path given they're trying to shoot you. Sure, 30 years ago this was still kinda awesome, now it just feels horribly dated. Plus the smaller details also accentuate it. You can shoot an enemy from behind and they'll not acknowledge it, or a shot can whiz past them and they don't respond. Even a melee attack will fail to make them stumble, they just power through it most of the time. Meanwhile enemies frequently respawn in clumps in open areas of the map. You'll walk around a corner and several of them are waiting for you, attacking you instantly upon sight and sometimes killing you or doing serious damage before you have a chance to react. Some of this could be bugs, while others feel like it's all built to reinforce that this was how it was played back in the day. The thing that drove it home for me about how this faithfulness really breaks the game is in the opening couple of hours, given the game provides zero direction on what you're supposed to do. Yes, I know that's how the game originally worked, and yes, I was able to capitalise on the fact that I played this game when I was a teenager and so I still kinda remembered what roughly the first couple of levels were like. But when you're playing games in 30-45 to 45 minute chunks, and amongst other work and general stuff to do, you may well forget what your active task is. Like I say, I've played the original game and remember the larger beats and overall tasks, but for someone new to System Shock this isn't particularly accommodating. Now, I'm not asking that it points a giant arrow over my head like its spiritual successor Bioshock, but instead I'd appreciate somewhere in the menus to retain knowledge of problems I need to solve. What door did I need a key for? What passcode am I still looking for? Heck, I actually had a horrid experience of deja vu as I struggled to destroy the final security camera I missed in a given level, which in doing so would reduce the security level to zero and allow me to take the elevator to the next area. No, but not only could I not find it, I had a sudden horrid realisation that the exact same thing happened to me when I played this game back in the day. How am I here experiencing the same frustrations 30 years later in a modern version of the same game? All of this brings my thoughts on the System Shock remake to a head. Ultimately, it is a very faithful adaptation. And when the game clicks, it is fun, it is engaging, and it's like I'm back in my bedroom as a kid, being scared senseless whenever Shodan decides to monologue. But it's less a remake than an HD pseudo remaster. Given the developers have been so devoted to making the game that they remember, it fails to see how it can improve upon what was there before, or at the very least make it a modern classic in the very genre it helped birth. Which is even more bizarre when you remember that the same studio has already remastered the original game for Steam. I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of this beyond the facelift and some improved inventory management that the other version already on Steam doesn't already provide. All of this isn't to say it's a bad game, and I suspect many people will enjoy it far more than I did. Rather, it just felt dated, and doesn't really present System Shock in its best light. 
I wanted more from this game. I wanted it to bring the game into the 21st century and remind me why, blemishes aside, the core of this game is something that still warrants being loved today. I'd be curious to see the response from others who've played the game based on their prior experiences with System Shock. Whether you're new to Citadel Station or returning back after a long time, I'm genuinely curious as to what your take on it is. But hey, that's it for me from now. Thanks for watching this episode of Smoke and Mirrors, and as stated, please let me know your thoughts on the game if you've tried it out. I suspect I'm going to be in the minority on this, so it's good to hear what others think of it. And with that, I'll be back with another video here on AI and Games Plus soon. Take care of yourselves, and I'll be back. Mm -hmm.